So what I want to do right now is do a, a video that does units of activity method for depreciation. So like straight line depreciation, you start off with the, uh, the asset, uh, the cost, all of the costs that it takes to acquire the asset. So that's the cost itself plus any delivery, any um, taxes you have to pay, any installation charges, everything like that. So let's just assume something costs uh, $40,000 plus $25,000 of delivery and installation costs. So you have a piece of equipment that is uh, $65,000 is the uh, cost of that piece of equipment. Um, from there, what you would do is you would subtract out the salvage value and salvage value is just the amount that you would uh, expect to receive once the useful life has, has, um, has occurred. So this could be anything from the um, from the weight of the steel or the weight of the iron uh, all the way to um, if it was a vehicle, what was the, or a vehicle or say a forklift, what could you sell it on Craigslist when you are going to dispose of it? So you come up with the amount to depreciate over its life, uh, like straight line depreciation when you're doing units of act activity uh, method. As soon as you hit that, that number, in this case 60,000, as soon as you hit that number, you stop depreciating. Uh, it's, it's deemed uh, fully depreciated and you don't have to do that journal entry anymore for the depreciation. Uh, then once you have the amount to depreciate, then you divide it by some sort of unit of activity. So it could be hours. Um, in the case of like a forklift, uh, there's not usually a, a odometer. There'd be an hour meter for the engine. Boats often have uh, an hour meter. Airplanes have an hour meter. Um, so certain equipment might be hours, other times it might be the, by the mile if you wanted to uh, depreciate your vehicles by the miles rather than straight line depreciation. Whatever your, uh, you know, whatever your units are, um, it really doesn't make a difference as long as it kind of makes sense to your activity, whatever you're doing. So let's just assume this is a forklift. Uh, it was, uh, it was a uh, $40,000 forklift, it cost $25,000 to get it to you. Uh, maybe it came from Europe or something like that. So you think when the forklift is all over with, uh, you're gonna be able to sell it for 5,000 bucks, so you have 60,000 there. And you think that the forklift's gonna last 100,000 hours. So I, I don't know if that's realistic. You'd have to figure out and ask questions. Well, you know, how long is a forklift motor gonna last or how long is a forklift gonna last, whatever it is. So anyway, uh, $60,000 divided by 100,000 hours is 60 cents per hour is the amount of depreciation. And uh, from there, what you would do is you would just, you don't really care about time. The only thing you care about is the, uh, the number of hours that the forklift or the piece of equipment was used. So our journal entry, if say you bought this uh, piece of equipment on 7-1-2016, the journal entry for buying the forklift would be a debit to equipment, a forklift, or whatever the asset account was that you had for $65,000, a credit to however you paid for it, let's just say cash for $65,000, and that would be your journal entry when you, um, uh, when you purchased it. At the end of the period, if the, it's the end of the fiscal year, and the fiscal year was also the calendar year, uh, at the end of the period, you'd make your adjusting journal entry, 1231.16, you'd go out to the forklift, you'd look to see the hour meter, and you'd read the hour meter on the forklift, and it may say uh, uh, 100 hours, 100 hours. Uh, well, 100 hours times 60 cents an hour is $60. So then the journal entry would be a debit to depreciation expense for $60 and you would credit the accumulated depreciation equipment account or accumulated depreciation forklift account for the $60. So that would be the journal entry at the, um, at the end of year one. Uh, end of year two, 1231, 2017, you'd run out there, you'd go and see, well, it went from 100 hours to 300 hours on the meter means you did 200 hours during 2017. So 200 hours times 60 cents an hour is $120 for that year. You would debit depreciation expense for the $120. You would credit accumulated depreciation, accumulated depreciation equipment 
for the $120. So this was, uh, if you only did 100 hours during 2016, and this was, of course, 200 hours in 2017. So that's really simple. Um, you know, you just go out, figure out how much you used it, multiply it by your hourly rate or your miles or whatever your unit is that you've, you've figured it out. So where it gets a little bit complicated is when you sell it, and we'll just remember that there's 60, 60 units. So let's say 2018 rolls around and you're completely don't use your forklift whatsoever, right? You're just not using it. You just said, you know, I'm going to sell it. I'm going to sell it on Craigslist. I'm going to sell it on equipment reseller and someone offers you $40,000 for it. So on March, let's say March 1st, 2018, you sell it for $40,000. Well, there's two journal entries. The first journal entry is to get caught up on the depreciation, and a second journal entry would be to record the sale. So you go out on March 1st, 2018. Remember, it had 100 hours in the first year, 200 hours in the second year. The, if it hadn't been used at all, there would be uh, uh, 300 hours on the hour meter instead. Now it has 310 hours. You really only used it 10 hours during 2018. So 10 hours times the 60 cents per hour is $6. So you would debit depreciation expense for the $6. All right, forget the pennies here. Debit depreciation expense for $6. And you would credit accumulated depreciation equipment for the $6. So that's journal entry number one. That gets you caught up on the uh, depreciation expense. Um, I think I said we sold it for $40,000. So that's the second part of this journal entry is you would receive $40,000 of cash. So we would debit cash for $40,000. You're going to credit the equipment account. You're going to credit the equip equipment account for whatever's in the equipment account. And what's in the equipment account is $65,000. Um, you also, if you no longer have the piece of equipment, you should no longer have the accumulated depreciation. Remember, accumulated depreciation is a credit balance. It's a contra asset account. So in order to get rid of the accumulated depreciation, we're going to have to debit accumulated depreciation, depreciation equipment for the amount that is in that, uh, that account. And so you had $60 in year one, $100 or $120 in year two, and $6 in year three. So you've got $186, $186 of, uh, of accumulated depreciation. Um, so we're going to debit the accumulated depreciation account for $186. Now you've got uh, $40,186 of debits. It's only $65,000 worth of uh, credits or $65,000 worth of credits. So that means that you need another, what, $24,800 of um, debits to make this work. And this is going to be a loss on sale of equipment. And this 24,814 is a plug when you add uh, 24,814 plus uh, 186 uh, plus 40,000 to the $65,000. Uh, $65, and so that would be the journal entry for the disposal. Anyway, hopefully that helps out with the units of activity. Um, if uh, you have any questions, you can ask me in class. I'd be more than happy to answer anything there. Thanks.